So I've been using these $5 chess boards ever since I started playing chess, and I think it's time that I finally started to change this up. I'm gonna make something that I've never seen before, and that's a checkerboard sort of nightstand that also doubles as a chess table. For folks who are new around here, my name's Andrew. I'm a skateboarder who makes things out of recycled skateboards. And this year I'm really trying to hone my craft of furniture making. I've made a few pieces this year already, but I've kind of always had this project in mind of making this sort of chess table set thing. What's really held me back is actually creating the actual chess pieces themselves. And when you watch a couple of videos online, the night itself proves to be quite the challenge. So in this particular video, I'm just gonna tackle this thing. So let's go. Sorry off this video, a lot of folks always ask me where I get my boards from and stuff. Uh, generally, folks will leave their old boards at the skate shop for me when they switch out for new ones. And so we're at the skate shop right now. All the things. We got Meg here. Hi. Yo, you any boards in the back? Yes, we do. Sweet. Hope all's well. So we pop in the back here and... Yo, we got some good selection here. So we have our stack here of the stuff that's uh, a little more banged up. And uh, we'll use these to, to make our chessboard here. Here we go. So we first start off by taking the grip tape off the skateboards. We use a heat gun to do so, and then we use a dowel to take off the grip tape itself. After that, we use a sanding disc on our grinder. We grind off the gunk and graphics from the skateboards themselves. Following that, we cut the skateboards into one inch strips and then glue it up into a bigger brick that'll later on be cut into diagonals. 24 hours later. Um, hey. I first started on the checkerboard uh, table thing, Are one you? of the slabs. Oh yeah, it looks so good. Oh. Nice. Thanks. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you excited for me to kick your ass? You're, there's no way you're going to kick my ass. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> there's no way I'm going to lose to you. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Okay, so at this point, the proof of concept and the sort of initial dry fit assembly is pretty sound. Of course, there were a few mistakes. Because we did the skateboards in batches, there's a ever so slight inconsistency and that's led to a bit of a, that's led to a bit of an overhang on the backside there. But realistically, we're gonna have to keep everything the size that it is, just to ensure that we have the proper size squares for the actual chessboard itself. Um, other than that, uh, as per usual with skateboards, there's always a bit of gap filling. Um, we're talking about multiple, multiple laminations. And then other than that, we're gonna miter the front end and then we'll start gluing this bad boy together. But while this is getting done, uh, we'll start getting away at some of the chest pieces and attacking that particular beast. So here we go. Okay. So now it's time to start with the chess pieces themselves. We're gonna start with creating 16 or so pawns first. It's gonna be the skateboards versus the pieces of walnut. I've kind of created this legend for how we're gonna make our pawns and the sizing and stuff. And you know, we kind of basically put them up against the lathe to kind of give ourselves rough dimensions as to what we're doing. We're also using calipers to ensure that we have the same width throughout the pieces as well. You know, so they're not gonna be a thousand percent the same, but they're gonna be pretty dang close, I think. Some of the mistakes potentially will kind of make this kind of individual and unique anyhow. So nothing to it but to do it. So uh, let's get away with these pieces. After chucking up the pieces, we first start off by making a square peg round. Next up, we use the parting tool and basically create the base of the piece. Following that, we use the calipers and the legend to figure out the sizing of the pieces themselves. Then, using a variety of various turning tools, we then slowly craft out our pieces, and this is super satisfying. 
Just take a look at this thing coming together. Using a similar approach, we pretty much turn all the pieces this way. Here's the queen being made right now. Furthermore, using a similar concept, we take big pieces of walnut and throw them up to the lathe and turn out our legs. I honestly can't say enough good things about turning things on the lathe because it's oddly therapeutic. Honestly, you all should give it a shot sometime if you have the chance. All right, sweet. Okay. So at this point with the box pretty much done, which I'm really hyped on with talking about, you know, trying to make beautiful furniture, I am mega pumped. I've never really necessarily seen anything like this. And so I'm pretty stoked. The next part of course is coming back to the pieces themselves. Having done the rooks, having done the bishops, having done the queens, it's time to start shaping some of the pieces as well, just because there's intricate cutouts in some of the pieces. So my friends at Sabretooth actually sent me a bunch of their bits and I'm actually gonna put them on my Dremel and kind of start shaping some of the pieces. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's give some of that a shot and then eventually it will lead to us uh, hopefully building out this night and stuff. Looking for something new Not sure what hope to find it soon Not trying to complain but I could use a change. I've risked it all. I played it safe. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how these saber tooth burrs work and we have some success in carving out most of our pieces, it's time for the singular sort of obstacle that's been in my brain for the last two or three years, and that's carving these knights. Based off of the work of folks like Blake McFarland and also my pal Mix with Miles. I have a vague idea of what I'm gonna try and do to get after this. So it's time to finally make this happen and uh, yeah, nothing to it but to do it. Here we go. Okay, so at this point I think my ambitions were a little high uh, given my actual ability and skill to actually kind of carve out the knight. Uh, I've got more of like a weird seahorse kind of thing going on. I think ultimately we're going to have to simplify greatly, but that's not to say we're going to get this done. So let's turn on the intense music again and let's keep on riding. Let's go. What do you think? What do you think, Stacy? All right, so I've got, uh, you know, a much better horse done up. I'm really actually pretty pumped on it. It's obviously fairly simplified, but uh, I think it's gonna work overall for just the set. Um, so yeah, uh, time to basically just wrap the rest of this up and finish these pieces and finish up the board and uh, start to finally play a game of chess and see uh, who's gonna reign supreme between Amber and I. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> you're down to your king and a couple of bonds, eh? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> After a hard fought battle, I ended up winning the chess match. For real? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be happier with how this project turned out. Thank you all so much for checking this out. Like, comment, subscribe, and all the things. I'll see you in the next one.